Hey everybody, thank you for joining us. So excited about our time here today. Whether you are by yourself or watching with other people, we encourage you just to join in and worship and praise with us. Some of our Christmas favorite songs here today, we're getting pretty close to Christmas. You're joining together this morning with a bunch of people in person as well, a growing number of people. So when you feel that you are comfortable or feel led to do so, then come and join us in person as well. But for now, let's all join our hearts together as we go before before the presence of the Lord, we're going to have a great time this morning, a time of worship, a kids component, very seasonal, and uh, then we're going to share from the Word of God together just in time for the upcoming holidays. And so here we go. Let's pray and we will jump in. Father, in Jesus' name, we join our hearts together today to, to, to join uh, all of our faith together and our, and our hope and our expectation together to come before you. Father, to believe you for things in our lives that only you can do. God, to hear your voice. Father, to feel closer to your presence today because of this time that we spend together. Father, we thank you that you honor this as we honor you. And Father, we believe you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. We'll be blessed today as we worship. Let's go.
give you glory, oh God. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, come, oh, come, adore our King. Glory in the highest, glory in the highest. Stepped 
adore. I adore Yes, I do. I adore you. I adore you. Come adore, oh come adore our King, glory in the highest, glory in the highest, let all creation
Hello, boys and girls. My name is Tim. How are you today? What's that? Why do I look like a Santa? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm here to tell you about Christmas, but not about Santa. I'm here to tell you about the real Christmas. Did you know the real Christmas was supernatural? Yes, so many supernatural things happened around the birth of Jesus. It's like God rolled up his sleeves and a bunch of miracles fell out of them. Just like we all like to make a nice gift look really nice too, with pretty ribbons and paper, God's gift of Jesus to our world was the very best he had to give. But then he made the gift look beautiful too, with all the miracles he did, just to make it special. Now, I bet you think you know the whole story of Christmas. You know, the shepherds, the wise men, Mary and Joseph. You've probably heard it all, but I'll bet you've never noticed just how supernatural it all really was. Here we go. Hello, Spencer. Hi, Rosie. This is a great tree today. Why, thank you. Hey, we're learning all about the supernatural Christmas and everything that was supernatural that happened. Yeah. Yeah, can you remember some of the things from last week? Yes, I can. We had like an angel. Yeah, a couple of angels, right? Yeah, a couple of angels. And Zacharias, what happened to Zacharias? His mouth was zipped closed. That's right, that was a real working of miracles, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then we have Elizabeth and Mary, and they both got pregnant miraculously. Yeah. That's right. Well, I think we should continue with our story, don't you? Yes, we should. But why are we learning about Zacharias and Elizabeth? They're that's, not even in the Christmas story. That's a very good question, Spencer. Well. Elizabeth and Mary were cousins, and so that means their babies were also cousins. So Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins. Ah. Oh. Yeah. But the reason they're part of the story is because when the angel came to Mary, he told her that Elizabeth was going to have a baby, and she was already very old. Yeah, they would have had grandchildren by now. If it was normal, that's right. Like if they didn't have any problem having kids, that's right, Elizabeth would have been a grandmother. But she was pregnant and the angel told Mary that, so Mary decided to go and visit Elizabeth. And so they became a part of the Christmas story. You'll find out here. Why don't okay. you open up that next thing? Okay. So Elizabeth is, or Mary is on her way to go visit Elizabeth. and. Luke 141 says, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leapt in her womb. This is baby. That's right. That's baby John. Yeah. That's working of miracles again. Did you know that some people believe this was the first time Elizabeth felt her baby move at all? Oh, really? Yeah. So it was truly a miracle because the baby inside her was more than six months old. Wow. So she really should have felt it by now. But this time, the baby leapt in her womb. And even if that wasn't the first time that she felt him move, the baby recognizing Jesus in Mary is also very supernatural, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did baby John know it was meeting baby Jesus? I don't know. That's really supernatural. Yeah. Okay, then open up number seven. Hey, open up number seven. Luke 1, 41 and 42 says... Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit after she saw Mary. Then she spoke out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary was only a little bit pregnant now, so she, Elizabeth wouldn't have known that just by looking at her. So we call this a word of knowledge. Do you remember what a word of knowledge is, Spencer? Yes, it's something that you could only know that comes from God. That's right. So Elizabeth got a word of knowledge about Mary, that she was pregnant with the Messiah. That's pretty supernatural, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about number eight? Number eight. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth until John was born, or really close to that time anyway. And then in Luke 163, it says that Zacharias wrote and asked for a writing tablet because they wanted to name the baby Zacharias, but Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. And so then Zacharias had to write on a tablet saying, his name is John. And then the Bible says immediately his mouth was opened 
and his tongue was loosed and he could speak again. Yay. Praising God. Another working of miracles. Yes. He was totally healed once John was born. That's great. So you know the next thing? Zacharias did something else. What? Let's open number nine. Okay. Let's see. Luke 1 67 says, Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. What do you remember what prophesying is? Um, prophesying is... A prophecy is a message from God that's supposed to do three things. Do yes, you remember? I do remember. You can just put it anywhere, Spencer. It's okay. Great. Okay. So what does a prophecy do? It always builds you up, push you forward, and bring you peace. That's right. So Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied. And he prophesied over his son. Mm. Yeah. He started pro prophesying about over John the Baptist and what his life would be all about. And how he was going to help announce that Jesus with the Messiah was coming to save Israel. So you see, Elizabeth and Zacharias were both a very important part of the Christmas story, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think Mary had a good time with Elizabeth because they both had miraculous pregnancies. That would have been fun for both to share. Okay, now we're going to learn about Joseph because he's a big part of the Christmas story too, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so let's open up that number 10. Because it was a problem that Mary was pregnant. Was? It was a problem because Joseph knew that he wasn't the father. And so he didn't know what to do. He thought, well, should I not marry Mary? Or what should I do? And so he was really confused and he thought about these things. And Matthew 120 says, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Is that an angel there on that? Yes, it yeah, is. It's another angel. We're yep. going to have so many angels on this tree. It's going to be great. Yep. Yeah. So an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is inside her is from the Holy Spirit. Wow. Yeah. So Joseph knew that Mary was okay, that God was really on the inside of her, and that the Messiah was coming. So an angel in the Joseph stream gave him a word of wisdom. What does that mean, Spencer? That means... A word of wisdom is a super, a supernatural, thing. super smart, no, super smart answer. That's right. Joseph didn't know what to do, and the angel of the Lord told him, gave him a word of wisdom, and we know that God's wisdom always works, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. So that's a super smart answer or solution that tells you what to do. Plus, it was another angel. Isn't God really great? Yeah. I sure love Christmas and all the supernatural things that happened. Yeah, me too. Great. Well, thank you so much, Spencer. You're welcome. Lizzie. Next week we're going to learn all about the angels and the what the sorry, the angels and the the shepherds and then the wise men too, cuz lots of supernatural stuff happened there. All yep. right. See you later, everybody. See ya. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. Can you see just how supernatural Christmas really was. I really think God made things so supernatural because he really wanted us to notice what a special thing it was to have Jesus come. God the Father was super excited that he was finally sending his son to come and be with us. And when God gets excited, miracles happen. And that was what Christmas is really all about. So how about you? God sent Jesus to come and be human like you. And when he grew up, he died on the cross for you. Do you know what else is supernatural? When we tell God we believe in him and we want to receive Jesus as our own savior, God says he makes us a new creature. Your spirit man gets born again, and that is truly supernatural. So if you've never asked Jesus to be your savior, you can do that right now, and you can become a part of this supernatural Christmas. Just repeat after me with all the kids out there. Dear Father, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And thank you for making that so special. I believe you sent Jesus to come and die for my sins so I can spend eternity with you. Come into my heart and make my spirit man 
become a new creature. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And Merry Christmas. See you later. Well, hey, kids. Thanks for that. That's awesome. We are going to jump into a time of prayer here over our finances. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to make a special thank you for those of you that have sown into our giving projects for uh, Christmas 2021. Where there's been a couple of different um, giving projects, and you guys have sown into those things and have been a blessing. Uh, we're going to be giving out, I think it's about 10 uh, Christmas uh, baskets here to people in our church and uh, people that our church knows as uh, ways of outreach. And so thank you for doing that. It blesses families and, uh, and it shows the love of Christ at this season. And so praise God for that. I want to say a quick prayer over our finances together as a church and the businesses that are in it, the households that are in it, and uh, individuals as well. Let's pray over our personal finances. Remember from the book of 1 Corinthians that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, it hasn't entered into the heart, those things that God has prepared for those who love him. And we believe that God has prepared blessing for us. He's prepared a way through for us. Maybe you're in financial stress or uncertainty right now. I tell you what, God has prepared a way through that for you. And he has prepared incredible things for you in your finances. And so we believe in our church that God is on our side when it comes to our jobs and getting better jobs and promotions and uh, unexpected income into our lives. The Bible teaches this. It says that God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to other people. And it's an incredible gift to be able to walk in that, that you and that me, God will bless us so that we can be a blessing to other people. Listen, God has revealed some of these things by his spirit. He's given us glimpses into what he has for us down the road. Let's join our faith together. We've seen all kinds of financial miracles lately. And over the last 21 months of this pandemic, you know, God has been faithful to us. And so let's go ahead and thank him and join our faith together for those things in the journey ahead in Jesus' name. And so, God, we do that this morning. We come before you and we thank you for your faithfulness to us. Go ahead and thank him this morning. Thank him that he's provided for you, that he's given you those things that, that you have needed and he's made a way where it hasn't, there hasn't seemed to be a way and God has come through and done it. God, we thank you and we acknowledge you for those things. And Father, we believe that you're a God and your promises to us. Father, that you are faithful and that Father, that even the uncertainty and that the stress that some of us might feel, especially this time of year and with our finances, God, I thank you in Jesus' name that you bless us to be a blessing. And that, Father, you anoint us more and more for that in our lives. Father, that you cause your provision to flow into our lives so that there may be an abundance, as your word says, for every good work, for everything that we might want to give to. God, we thank you for that. God, thank you for this, this incredible gift that you've given us of being able to be a part of what you're doing financially and to join with you. And so, God, we thank you for it. Believe in you, Father, for your provision and for your answers. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, amen. Blessings you give. There's instructions on your screen at the end of the service. Thank you for those of you that have been giving again and for your faithfulness in it. Praise God. All right, let's go to the book of Colossians. We're going to stay right here, true to our text in Colossians. You can find that book in the New Testament. It's a letter to, the, to a church in uh, Colossae, and, and it was written uh, first century but we're believing that it is the inspired word of God for us today, that it's not just a letter written by, but written by an incredible author, no doubt about it, an incredible man, a writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, planted all kinds of churches, was responsible for, for much of the spread of Christianity in his day, an incredible writer, and it goes to a church that we can see has the life of God in it. And a church that um, was following God and they had some problems and some, you know, um, some, some temptations, if you want to say it that way. But they had some issues that, that, that the writer, the Paul, was addressing to the church. But listen, it's not just a writer uh, writing to a church back then. It is the Spirit of God speaking to us right here, right now. And we're going to stay right true to the text here in uh, Colossians chapter 3. If you're just joining us, we've, re we've been in Colossians 1 and 2 and pulled out numerous truths there. And I don't know about you, but I've been encouraging our church. I've, I've said, you know what, let this whet your appetite to go into the book of Colossians to look more at the, what the word of God has to say there. There is nothing 
like the experience of just reading along something like the book of Colossians or maybe one of the Gospels or maybe you do this this time of year is just to go into the, the stories of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the historical accounts, and just to go in there and just to read the Christmas story, to read it all over again. There's nothing like it when you are just reading along and all of a sudden a verse jumps off the page, if you will, at you. And, and it's kind of like, God, you're speaking this to me. God, you are in this, aren't you? The word of God is inspired of God. It's inspired by God. It's God breathed, as the Bible says of itself. It's God breathed. It's inspired of God to speak to your spirit, to speak to your heart, to reveal truth to you. So I encourage you, maybe you'll get some time over the holidays here after things kind of quieten down and, and you kind of get some time uh, maybe with your family around. You can pick up the scriptures or just by yourself, pick up the scriptures, pick up the book of Colossians or, you know, like I said, the stories of Jesus, the Christmas story and begin to read them and allow the Lord God to speak to you. I hope that's what it's, this is inciting you to do as we get into the book of Colossians because you can see there's so much here and we're just scratching the surface of it. But here we are in Colossians chapter 3. Let's go there together. I want us to read. This is Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start there. He's saying this. He says, If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. What an amazing scripture there. Just verse 1, 2, and 3 of Colossians 3. Let's pick it apart a little bit. This is, this is great. I, I said this is a message just in time for the holidays, and you'll see what I mean by this. But it's a great example of the, uh, you know, the, the running around of Christmas Day, the commercialization of it, oftentimes the busyness of it and the family dynamics of, um, of Christmas. And maybe you're heading into some times where you're not sure how those family dynamics are going to play out. And there's the, the increased stress of you know, issues of the pandemic and so forth and gathering and, and the fear and the uncertainty that's out there. Remember, don't be a part of that culture of fear. The, the Bible says that the spirit of God has not given us, he's not given us a spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, I tell you what, with all of the things that are, are going on in society around us and maybe in your life and maybe it hits pretty close to home, maybe there's job issues or like I said, family issues and family dynamic issues. Listen, this is a great example. We get to live through this season with our eyes not on all those things. Listen, the eyes of our heart, the eyes of what we're attached to, what we're focused on, what we're drawing our security from not the things of this world, not even the things of family, and not the things that pertain to like our everyday existence here on the earth. Rather, we can set our eyes on something higher, something greater, something more stable. We can set the focus of our heart. We can seek those things, as the verse 1 says, those things which are above. And uh, we need this in our lives. You know, we need this anytime, but a particularly at a, at a time of you know, potential stress or potential struggle or trial or just really wanting things to work out and, and wanting it to be good and not knowing exactly how to do it. Listen, this is a huge key right here. I say to you, if you are following the Lord Jesus Christ and all it takes to do that is to receive him personally into your life. And maybe most of you have done this, but maybe some of you haven't. So it bears repeating. You can know about God or know about Jesus, but God will bring you, if you're open to him and hungry to him, for him, the spirit of God will bring you to a line that you cross that makes it all of a sudden more than something you know about or something you're learning about, but it makes it personal where you cross over that line and you say, God, I ask you into my heart. God, I ask you to forgive me for the things that I have done wrong. Jesus, your punishment that you bore for me, where you took my, you took my sin upon yourself, God, I receive that into my life. I receive your forgiveness. And God, come and be Lord of my life. When you pray a prayer like that, you become someone that is following the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of us following the Lord Jesus Christ, there is so much more for us to focus on than the things that are around us. So much more for us to, to, um, to, to, to give our attention to 
to allow to pull on the, the, the insecurities or the, the struggles of our heart. And so we're going to go into the scripture here. We need this this morning. We need this over the holidays. We need this in our world right now more than ever before. I tell you what, this might have been written a long time ago, but it feels by the Spirit of God that it was written for us. It says, since then you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. I want us to go over to the book of Ephesians, which is just A couple of books back, just a few pages actually, a few letters back you'll see in the book of Ephesians here. It says to set your mind, to seek those things which are above, to seek those things which are above. And I want to, I want to show you a little bit of what he's talking about, a little bit into the mind of the writer here about what he's talking about. And to do that, we're going to go to a different letter to a different church. This is a letter to a church in Ephesus, also from the Holy Spirit to us today. And it says this. Let's jump in um, chapter 1, verse 20. It's talking about the power that you and I have, and and God wants to open up our eyes to the power that we have on the inside of us because God is on the inside of us. And he says, This power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And and we believe that, that that God rose rose Jesus from the dead and that uh, he came up out of the grave and his actual physical body, that power right there, that power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So where is Jesus? He is seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places. I want you to remember that. That's where where Jesus is. He's seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places, which is great, right? This is Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that can be named, not only on in this age, but also in that which is to come. He put him far above. Jesus is far above every principality and power and might and dominion and every name that can be named. Not just a little bit above, but far above. The victory that Jesus wrought, the the triumph that Jesus accomplished when he rose from the dead. The the Bible says he took the keys back of death and hell from from Satan himself. And he rose, he took the authority back. The Bible says that all authority has been given to him. And so Jesus is raised above all, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And it says here, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is an incredible truth of Christianity, that Jesus has been, has been given all authority and might and rule and dominion on the earth. And he shares his authority with us. And he says, you go therefore and proclaim my kingdom in the earth. That's an amazing, amazing truth of Christianity. But suffice it to say, where where is Jesus? He's far above all principality and power. He's seated at the right hand of God. I want you to jump down into into chapter 2 just for time's sake. Chapter 2, let's go in verse 4. It's talking about you and I coming to Christ. You and I deciding personally to make this a decision that we want to follow the Lord Jesus. Remember I said you need to make it personal. Once you do that, here's what happens to you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, and that means like in our sins, in our wrongdoing, in our rebellion to God. It says we were dead in our trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Watch this in verse six, talking about your conversion, right? Even though you you were dead in your sin and your trespasses and your rebellion against God, God made you alive in Christ. He brought you to that place where you make it personal for you. And it says, when you do that, verse six, you were raised up together and he made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And there's a bit of a sentence there. That sentence isn't done and it goes on and the thought moves on. But I tell you what, 
Here's what he's saying, that Christ was raised far above all principality, all power and all might and all dominion. And even though you were dead in your sin and your trespass, your rebellion against God, he raised you up and he made you to sit together in the heavenly places with Christ. And so Jesus is in the heavenly places far above and you and I, there you and I are sitting right there with him. That is our place. That is the positional, objective truth of our Christianity, of our place in God. That's where we are. Now, whether our eyes are opened to that truth and to the degree that, there are, that our eyes are open to the, to the degree that we understand what that means for us is the degree that we'll enjoy it and we'll live it out and we'll employ that, that position that God's given us in our lives. But the, to the degree that our eyes are closed to it or our hearts are closed to it or we're not aware of it, then we won't. And we won't live that out. And we won't be those ones that develop the, that understanding in our own lives. We won't live it out if we don't understand it. Isn't that right? But if we can understand it, if we can see it. Back up a little bit here into um, chapter 1, verse 18. Chapter 1, verse 18. This is the... The, the imploring of the Holy Spirit through these scriptures. He says this, that the eyes of your understanding would be opened, enlightened, that you would know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the heavenly God wants us to see, and he wants us to know. He wants our eyes to be opened to another dimension of truth around what it means to be raised with Christ. Let's go back to our scripture here in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. This is why he says, some of the background, some of the reason why he's saying this. Chapter 3, verse 1, remember this? from a few moments ago, if then we were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things. Seek to understand it. Seek to want to know. Seek to set your eyes of your heart and your understanding and your affections and where your mind goes. Seek to understand it. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Wait a second. Go back to the book of Ephesians. Go back to the book of Ephesians in chapter 1. Book of Ephesians chapter 1. Flipping back and forth here this morning. This is verse 3. Set your mind on things above. Seek those things which are above. Watch this. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Wow. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen, first and foremost, things exist in the spirit. There is spiritual truth something that's been given to you spiritually where you understand that this is yours, that God wants to provide for you, actual, actual provision in your life, financial provision, that God has healed you, that the curse of sin has been broken from you, that you don't have to operate in that kind of behavior anymore because you have been changed by the Spirit of God. Those things are spiritual things first before they're ever lived out before they're ever believed on by a person to say, God, I believe you for this in my life. I thank you for it. Before we appropriate the promises of God by faith, they are there in the spirit where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. See, the answer to whatever dilemma you're facing to whatever problem is in front of you, whatever challenge, whatever uncertainty, whatever fear is tempting you to try to try to get you to focus on it or get it, let it to, to let it control what you do. Listen, no matter what it is, the answer is in the spirit. The answer is in those things that you have been provided for you in heavenly places. 
those heavenly places in which you sit right now with Christ. Praise the Lord. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. And again, he says in verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Listen, all hell can be breaking loose all around you, and you might have felt that that has been the case. You might be confronted by challenges, by circumstances, by complex, com you know, complex issues all around you. You might feel like that's your reality on a day-to-day -day basis, but it doesn't change the fact that you can set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. And listen, it's not to abdicate responsibility for those things. It's to know how to think and to know how to pray and to know how to declare from the authority that you have into the situations on the earth to bring change. Instead of just being a part of the, the, the culture and the spiritual dynamics as they are on the earth, instead of just becoming a part and being caught up in whatever plans are going on around you, you get to see things from heaven's perspective and to speak the kingdom of God there. As a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the ability to bring the kingdom of God wherever you are and what in whatever you do. Praise the Lord for that. So set your mind on things above for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Listen, you died when you said, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Jesus, become a, I, be, I ask you to come and sit on the throne of my heart. God, I want to follow you with my life. When you make that prayer, the Bible says it's like you died to sin and you, he made you alive unto God. And it's not just flowery religious picture language. There's something that really, 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 really happened when you decided to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says you become born again. The old man is gone and the new man is alive. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And here's the promise, verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You live for a day in which Christ will come once again to the planet earth, and he will receive unto himself those that are his. And here's the promise. When Christ, who is your life, appears, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Jesus comes back or you go to be with him, you will have fullness of life. Praise the Lord. This is what we're living for. This is what it means when it says that our life is hidden with Christ in God. It's the place where there's every spiritual blessing. It's the place where there's every bit of power or wisdom or understanding that you need. And especially for the holidays that are ahead. And I'll tell you where this goes for the believer, for the one that wants to walk with God. You know where this goes? It goes into your own behavior. It goes into the fruit of the Spirit operating out of your life. It, the Spirit of God would lead you, will lead you into places where you're putting off this old man the way that you used to be. And you're putting on the new man, the who you are in Christ. You're, you're, you're uh, turning away from the ways in which you once walked and the ways in which you talked and the ways that you dealt with people and the old ways of getting caught up in family dynamics or, or workplace scenarios. You die to all of that and you become alive with the life of God on the inside of you. That's where it goes. And you can read down through the rest of the chapter. It tells you about how, how to do it, how to put off the old man and to put on the new man. And I tell you what, you can stand in front of your mirror. You can declare it on your way to work. You can just take a moment out, out, you know, out of the family dynamics, just go for a walk or something and just be like, you know what? I put off that old man and I put on the new man. I apply the life of God. I see things from heaven's perspective and from heaven's reality. That's what, that's what we're to do as followers of Christ. And you can read all about that down through the rest of Colossians chapter 3. And we are going to jump further into that in the weeks ahead. Well, praise God, everybody. I want us to pray, and I want to pray over um, some of our Christmas holidays, over the, the times that are ahead, even over some of the uncertainty that's out there in the world right now. Come on, let's join our faith together, and let's pray. We believe prayer, it changes things. And so come on, let's pray. I invite you into this today, Father, right now, in Jesus' name. I believe you by your spirit, 
Spirit of God, that you come and that you move and you operate inside of our thinking, inside of our hearts and our minds right now. God, I pray that you would just, even in the, in the physical rooms where we are, that your presence would invade, that the atmosphere would begin to change to the atmosphere of heaven right now. That, Father, as we turn the burdens and the, 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 the trials of our heart over to you, God, right now, that you would take those from us now in Jesus' name. Even, even fears or uncertainty about the days that are ahead. Father, I thank you that right now that, you, that we roll that care off on you onto you. And Father, I thank you for your promise in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word, oh God, that we can set our hearts on things above, that we we make that adjustment right now. God, we ask you by your spirit to show us, to enlighten the eyes of our understanding. Let them be enlightened now that we would know what is the hope of our calling, that we would know where it is that we sit with you in heavenly places. Father, I pray as the pastor of our church that by your spirit, God, you would cause us to come up a level in our thinking, to to stir, God, by your spirit, stir on the inside of us a hope and a desire and an an image and a picture and and the reality of who we are, of, of how you've chosen us, of how you've made us children of your promise, of how you have a destiny and a plan for our lives. God, we pray for these things. Let them be real to us. And Father, right now, we make the decision. You do this as I pray it this morning. Just follow me through on this. The decision to, to set our hearts, to seek those things which are above during the, next, during the next few days, during these holidays and the days that are ahead and into 2022. Spirit of God, we join with you now to make this decision to seek those things which are above, to set our minds on those things which are above every spiritual blessing that we need, every bit of power and ability and understanding and grace to live right and to speak right and to behave right, every bit of grace that we need, God, we receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you for it. Father, I pray that the the holidays ahead and even just some of the rushing around and then the times of rest and and hopefully times of feasting and celebrating the, the entrance of light into the earth. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I, we just pray for your blessing upon us and upon the holidays, upon travel. If anybody's traveling, Father, thank you for, your, for, for, for safety on the roads and, in, and all the transitions and all the traveling. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for your word that declares over us nothing by any means shall harm us, that no plague will come near our dwelling. God, we thank you for these things. And Father, I pray, Mara and I, we join our faith together with our church family now. Father, that that a spirit of strife would be bound in Jesus' name. We bind a spirit of strife and any spirit that would detract and, and pull away from what God has for us for these holidays. And Father, we thank you. We invite you in all that you want to do and all the blessing that you have and your grace and your love and your ability in us. Father, we thank you for it. Open our eyes to these things, we pray, by the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, amen. Well, be blessed. And uh, don't forget to find out details about our Christmas Eve service if you're interested in that. Uh, Details uh, on our website regarding those things. And then no Sunday service next Sunday. Sunday. We're doing a Christmas Eve service instead. So no service um, on uh, Boxing Day, but then we'll see you right back after that. Enjoy your holidays, everybody, and we'll see you around hopefully Christmas Eve. See you soon. Bye for now.